Commander Alex Mercer was on a routine patrol around Titan, Saturn's largest moon, aboard his reconnaissance craft, the Spectre. Titan, with its thick atmosphere and vast methane seas, had always presented a challenging environment for exploration, but Alex was well-versed in navigating its complexities. The patrol was standard procedure, part of the United Space Command's efforts to monitor activity and maintain security around their extraterrestrial outposts. As the Spectre glided silently through the cold vacuum of space, Alex kept a close eye on the array of instruments and monitors before him. The craft's advanced sensors scanned the surface and atmosphere of Titan, searching for any irregularities that might indicate unauthorized spacecraft or natural phenomena of interest. The calm of the mission was suddenly interrupted when one of the instruments emitted a soft but insistent beep. Alex leaned forward, focusing on the readout that now flashed an unusual energy signature. It was emanating from a region near Kraken Mare, Titan's largest methane sea, known for its deep, dark waters and unpredictable weather patterns. This was not the first time Alex had observed anomalies on Titan, but the strength and nature of this signal were unlike any he had encountered before. Computer, analyze the source of that energy signature, Alex instructed his voice calm and measured. The onboard AI, a standard feature in all us crafts, quickly processed the request. Analysis complete. The energy signature is of unknown origin, emanating from beneath the surface of Kraken Mare. It does not match any known natural or artificial sources recorded in the USC database, the AI reported, its synthetic voice devoid of emotion. Alex's interest was piqued. An unknown energy source could mean a plethora of things. A natural phenomenon not yet documented by human science, the remnants of some ancient alien technology, or perhaps something more concerning, like covert activity by rival factions within the solar system. Set a course for Kraken Mare. Let's take a closer look, Alex decided, his training as a US commander kicking in. Caution and curiosity drove his actions in equal measure. The Spectre responded smoothly to his commands, altering its trajectory toward the methane sea. As they approached, Alex activated the craft's submersible mode, a feature designed specifically for Titan's unique environment, allowing the craft to navigate both air and liquid methane. The transition was seamless. The Spectre descended into the dense orange haze of Titan's atmosphere, its hull cooling systems working overtime to counteract the extreme cold of the methane sea. Alex watched the external temperature readings drop, feeling a familiar thrill at the prospect of discovery. As they neared the coordinates of the energy signal, the specter's powerful lights pierced the murky darkness of Kraken Mare. The methane sea was eerily calm, its surface a mirror to the dim light of the distant sun. Alex reduced their speed, navigating carefully through the dense liquid. Suddenly, the methane beneath them seemed to glow, illuminated by a source that was decidedly not the specter's lights. Alex brought the craft to a halt, hovering above the glowing area. The energy signature was now stronger than ever, clearly emanating from something beneath the surface. Looks like we've found our anomaly, Alex muttered to himself, a sense of anticipation building within him, he activated the craft's sonar, sending pulses of sound into the depths below to map out whatever lay hidden beneath the methane. The return signals revealed an unexpected structure, large and geometric, clearly artificial in nature. It was a startling find. Usk records held no account of any installations in this area of Titan. Computer, record all data and prepare a detailed report. We're going back to Atlas Haven. Alex commanded, already planning his next steps. This discovery warranted immediate attention from Usk's higher-ups and potentially from the scientific community at large. As the Spectre ascended back into Titan's atmosphere, leaving Kraken Mare and its secrets behind, Alex couldn't shake the feeling that this routine patrol might have just changed the course of human presence on Titan. The implications of their find were vast, and Alex knew the decisions made in the coming days would be pivotal. Upon returning to Atlas Haven, Titan's primary base, Alex's first action was to secure a meeting with Dr. Leo Franklin, the base's lead scientist and an authority on interstellar phenomena. If anyone could shed light on their discovery, it would be him. 
Dr. Franklin, we found something beneath Kraken Mare. An energy signature unlike anything we've recorded before. There's an artificial structure down there, Alex reported, the moment he stepped into Franklin's lab. Dr. Franklin looked up from his work, his eyes reflecting both surprise and intrigue. An artificial structure? On Titan? That's unexpected. Show me the data, Commander. Let's see what we're dealing with here. Commander Alex Mercer descended deeper into Kraken Mare, navigating the specter through the murky depths with a mix of caution and curiosity. The methane sea of Titan was known for its extreme cold and unpredictable currents, but today it hid something even more unusual, an energy signature that didn't match any known human or natural source. As the specter's lights pierced the darkness, the outline of a massive structure emerged from the gloom. It was an underwater facility, its sleek design barely visible against the backdrop of Titan's seabed. The structure was colossal, suggesting it was capable of housing a significant operation. Its presence here, hidden in the depths of Kraken Mare, raised more questions than it answered. Drone deployed, Alex announced, pressing a button on the console. A small reconnaissance drone detached from the Spectre and made its way toward the facility. Its cameras relayed images back to Alex, showing the facility's exterior in greater detail. The architecture was unmistakably human sharp angles, reinforced metal plating, and the distinct emblem of the United Space Command etched onto one of the walls. How is this possible? Alex muttered to himself, his brows furrowed. There were no records of any USC operations on this scale in the region, let alone an entire facility hidden beneath Titan's methane sea. The drone found an entry point, a large hatch that seemed to serve as a main airlock. It was sealed shut, with no obvious signs of recent activity. Alex guided the drone closer, examining the locking mechanism. It was an advanced biometric system, likely requiring clearance that Alex didn't possess. He considered his options for a moment before making a decision. Time to pay a visit to Dr. Franklin, he said, directing the specter to ascend back to the surface. His discovery demanded expertise beyond his own, and Dr. Leo Franklin was the foremost authority on advanced technology and alien artifacts within the USC. Upon returning to Atlas Haven, Alex wasted no time. He made his way swiftly through the base's corridors, the urgency of his discovery quickening his steps. The personnel he passed greeted him with nods and salutes, but he barely registered their presence, his mind focused on the task at hand. He arrived at Dr. Franklin's lab, where the scientist was engrossed in his work, surrounded by screens displaying complex equations and schematics. Leo, Alex called out, catching the doctor's attention. Dr. Franklin turned, adjusting his glasses. Alex, what brings you to my corner of the base? And with such haste, I found something under Kraken Mare. A facility, Leo. It's massive, and it's ours, Alex explained, his voice a mix of excitement and concern. Dr. Franklin's eyes widened in surprise. Ours? Are you certain? There's nothing in the ESC logs about a facility on Titan, let alone underwater. It's there, and it's got our logo on it. But it's like nothing I've ever seen. We're talking about tech that's way beyond our current capabilities. And it's just sitting there hidden, Alex continued, his frustration evident. Dr. Franklin leaned back, processing the information. This is extraordinary and troubling. We need to gain access, understand what's inside. It could redefine our understanding of USC's operations in this sector. Alex nodded. I knew you'd want to see it for yourself. But there's a catch the entrance is locked. Biometric security. We'll need your expertise to get in. Dr. Franklin stood, a determined look on his face. Then what are we waiting for? Let's uncover the secrets of this hidden facility. Together, they prepared to venture back into the depths of Kraken Mare, armed with cutting-edge tools and a shared determination to unravel the mystery of the underwater facility. What they would find there had the potential to change not just their lives, but the future of humanity's presence on Titan and beyond. With the hidden facility's existence confirmed and its mysteries beckoning, Commander Alex Mercer knew the next step required expertise beyond his own. 
Dr. Leo Franklin, stationed at Atlas Haven, was the mind for the job. Known for his groundbreaking work in interstellar propulsion systems and a knack for deciphering the undecipherable, Dr. Franklin was the base's unofficial go-to for anything that veered into the unknown. Upon returning to the surface, Alex made his way straight to Dr. Franklin's lab, a high-tech den cluttered with gadgets, wires, and holographic displays projecting complex algorithms and star maps. Dr. Franklin, a man of middle age with a sharp gaze magnified by his thick glasses, was immersed in his latest project when Alex entered. Dr. Franklin, we need to talk, Alex announced, his tone serious enough to immediately grab the scientist's attention. Leo turned, pushing his glasses up the bridge of his nose, his curiosity piqued. Commander Mercer, this sounds urgent. What's on your mind? Alex wasted no time. I've discovered an underwater facility in Kraken Mare. It's advanced, Leo, far beyond anything we've got on record. And it's ours, he explained, laying out the data pad that contained the drone's footage and the readings he'd collected. Leo leaned over the data pad, his eyes scanning the information rapidly. Fascinating, he murmured, tapping the screen to zoom in on the images of the facility. And you're certain this is a U.S. operation? These tech signatures are decades ahead of where we should be. That's just it, Leo. I can't make heads or tails of it. But I know you can help. We need to get inside, figure out what's going on, Alex said, the urgency in his voice mirroring the weight of their discovery. Leo looked up from the data pad, meeting Alex's gaze. You realize what you're asking could uncover secrets that some might prefer stayed buried? I do. But think about the potential, Leo. If we could harness whatever's down there, the benefits could be enormous. Not just for us, but for humanity, Alex implored, hoping to ignite the same spark of curiosity and ambition he felt in himself. After a moment of contemplation, Leo nodded, a determined glint in his eye. All right, Alex, I'm with you. Let's crack this mystery wide open. The two men set about planning their next steps. Leo suggested they create a specialized tool to bypass the facility's biometric security system. Drawing on his extensive knowledge of USG standard security protocols and his own research into alien technology, Leo sketched out a design for a device that could mimic the necessary biological signatures to gain entry. Working side by side, they assembled the device in Leo's lab, surrounded by the hum of machinery and the soft glow of computer screens. The process was meticulous, requiring precision and a deep understanding of both human and theoretical alien tech. Almost there, Leo muttered as he connected the last wire. This should do it. If my calculations are correct, we'll have about a 30-second window to get through the door once this baby does its magic. Alex watched in admiration as Leo worked. The scientist's hands were steady, his focus unbreakable. It was clear to Alex that, for Leo, this was more than just a challenge. It was a chance to contribute to something that could redefine their understanding of human capability and the universe's secrets. Ready to test it? Alex asked, anticipation lacing his words. Leo wiped his brow and nodded. Let's give it a go. After all, what's science without a little bit of trial and error? Together, they tested the device, ironing out the kinks and making adjustments until it performed flawlessly in simulations. With the tool ready and their resolve firm, Alex and Leo prepared to venture back to the hidden facility beneath Kraken Mare's icy surface. Their partnership, born out of necessity and fueled by a shared thirst for knowledge, was about to face its first real test. Neither knew what awaited them in the depths, but both understood that the path they were about to walk could change everything. With Dr. Leo Franklin's newly devised biometric bypass tool in hand, Commander Alex Mercer and the scientist made their way back to the enigmatic facility deep beneath the methane sea of Titan Kraken Mare. The descent was silent, both men lost in their own thoughts about what lay ahead. The specter's lights once again illuminated the facility's entrance, revealing the massive, sealed hatch that stood between them and the secrets of the structure. Leo handed the compact device to Alex, who approached the hatch with a mix of determination and apprehension. Here goes nothing, Alex muttered, aligning the device with the hatch's security panel. 
A series of beeps followed, and after a tense moment, the hatch hissed open, revealing the dark interior of the hidden facility. As they stepped inside, their boots echoed on the metallic floor, the sound bouncing off the walls of the long, dimly lit corridor that stretched before them. The facility was eerily silent, with only the distant hum of machinery breaking the quiet. This place gives me the creeps, Alex whispered, his voice barely above a breath. Leo nodded, his gaze fixed on the tablet he carried, which displayed the facility's layout they had pieced together from the drone's earlier reconnaissance. According to this, there should be a central control room up ahead. That's our best bet for finding out what this place is all about. The control room, when they found it, was a cavernous space filled with rows of dormant consoles and flickering holographic displays. The air was stale, the room seemingly untouched for years. Alex and Leo split up, each taking a section of the room to investigate. It was Leo who made the first breakthrough. Alex, come over here. You need to see this, he called out, his voice tinged with excitement and disbelief. Alex hurried over, finding Leo standing before a large terminal that had come to life at his touch. On the screen was a project logo they had never seen before, Project Titanfall. Below it, files upon files of data scrolled past, too fast to read. Leo tapped the screen, bringing up a document. Project Titanfall, he read aloud. A USC initiative aimed at developing quantum technology for instantaneous interstellar travel and potentially weaponry, classified as top secret. Project status discontinued. Alex leaned in, absorbing the information. Quantum technology? That could change everything. But why was it discontinued? Leo flicked through more files, his brow furrowed. It seems the project was deemed too dangerous. There are notes here about unpredictable outcomes and quantum instabilities. It appears they couldn't control the technology reliably. The implications were staggering. If they could unlock the secrets of Project Titanfall, they might gain access to technology that could revolutionize space travel and defense. But the risks were equally monumental. The unpredictable nature of quantum technology could lead to catastrophic consequences if mishandled. We need to tread carefully, Alex, Leo warned, his excitement tempered by caution. This technology could be a boon or a disaster waiting to happen. Alex nodded, his mind racing with the possibilities and dangers. Let's gather as much information as we can. We need to understand what we're dealing with before we make any decisions. Together, they delved deeper into the project files, piecing together the history of Project Titanfall. They learned of the brilliant minds that had been brought together to work on the initiative, the breakthroughs they had achieved, and the insurmountable challenges that had ultimately led to its shutdown. As they worked, the magnitude of their discovery weighed heavily on them. They were standing on the precipice of a new era for humanity, but one false step could lead to an abyss from which there would be no return. In their thorough examination of the facility, Alex and Leo stumbled upon a sealed chamber, its doors marked with warnings of quantum instability and high-energy fields. The signs, meant to deter, only fueled their curiosity further. With the same caution and determination that had brought them this far, they prepared to access the chamber using the biometric bypass tool once again. As the doors slid open, a low hum filled the air, growing steadily in intensity. Inside, they found the source of the facility's mysterious energy readings, a massive quantum reactor, its core pulsating with a brilliant, otherworldly light. The reactor was unlike any technology they had encountered, clearly a product of Project Titanfall's ambitious endeavors. This is it, Leo whispered, his voice filled with awe. The heart of Project Titanfall. Alex approached the reactor cautiously, feeling the air around him crackle with energy. How is it still running after all these years? He pondered aloud. Leo was already at a console, scanning data and diagrams that detailed the reactor's design and function. It seems to be in a state of quantum equilibrium, he explained. A perfect balance, making it incredibly stable despite the power it's generating. The reactor, they learned, was capable of creating controlled wormholes, gateways in space-time that could allow for instantaneous travel across vast distances. 
It was a discovery that could redefine the very nature of space exploration and warfare, offering untold possibilities. But why was it left here, abandoned and hidden? Alex questioned, the potential risks of such a technology not lost on him. Leo continued to sift through the data, piecing together the project's history. It looks like the initial tests were successful, but they couldn't replicate the results reliably. The wormholes were unstable, sometimes collapsing unexpectedly or leading to unknown parts of space. The enormity of their discovery weighed heavily on them. In the wrong hands, the reactor could be a weapon of unimaginable power, capable of tearing through the fabric of the universe itself. We need to secure this, Leo, Alex stated firmly, his sense of duty overriding the wonder of the moment. Before someone else finds it and decides to take their chances. Leo nodded in agreement. I'll start working on a way to safely shut it down, or at least ensure it can't be activated without the proper safeguards. As Leo set to work, Alex couldn't help but marvel at the reactor. Its steady pulse was hypnotic, a visible rhythm to the unseen forces it harnessed. The potential for good was as vast as the potential for destruction. It was a reminder of humanity's reach and ambition, as well as its hubris. In the silence of the chamber, with the reactor humming softly in the background, Alex and Leo worked with a shared purpose. They were no longer just a commander and a scientist. They were guardians of a force beyond comprehension, tasked with making the right choices in the face of unimaginable possibilities. As Alex and Leo delved deeper into the workings of the quantum reactor, the facility's distant corridors echoed with the sound of stealthy footsteps. Unknown to the duo, their discovery had not gone unnoticed. Admiral Vincent Cross, a high-ranking officer with ambitions that stretched beyond his official duties, had been monitoring their progress closely. Cross had long suspected the existence of Project Titanfall and had been searching for a way to harness its power for his own ends. The reports of Alex's initial findings had been the final piece he needed. Assembling a team of loyalists, Cross planned to take control of the facility and its groundbreaking technology. Inside the reactor chamber, Leo was making headway with the reactor's controls. I think I found a way to initiate a safe shutdown sequence, but it's going to take some time, he informed Alex. Before Alex could respond, the chamber's entrance burst open. Cross and his team, armed and resolute, stormed in. Step away from the controls, Dr. Franklin, Cross commanded, his voice echoing menacingly through the chamber. Alex instinctively moved to intercept them, but Cross's men were quick to train their weapons on him. What's the meaning of this, Cross? Alex demanded, his voice tense with anger and disbelief. Cross, unfazed, stepped forward. Project Titanfall is too valuable to be left in the hands of idealists like you, Mercer. With this technology, we can ensure humanity's dominance in the galaxy. I intend to see that potential realized. Leo, hands raised, stepped away from the console, his mind racing for a solution. You don't understand the risks, Admiral. This technology is unstable. Its power could tear apart the very fabric of space if mishandled. Cross's gaze hardened. I'm willing to take that risk. Secure the reactor and detain them he ordered his men, who moved swiftly to comply. As Alex and Leo were forcibly led out of the chamber, the gravity of the situation sank in. Cross's betrayal wasn't just a personal affront, it was a threat to the safety of the entire solar system. The Admiral's lust for power had blinded him to the dangers of tampering with forces beyond human control. In the confines of a makeshift holding cell within the facility, Alex and Leo exchanged grim looks. We need to get out of here and stop him before it's too late, Alex whispered, his mind already working on a plan of escape. Leo nodded in agreement. I might be able to overload the cell's door mechanism, but we'll need a distraction. The two men set to work, their resolve unbroken despite the dire circumstances. They knew the stakes were higher than ever. The fate of humanity rested on their ability to thwart Cross's dangerous ambitions and safeguard the secrets of Project Titanfall from those who would misuse its power. Confined within the dimly lit holding cell, Alex Mercer and Dr. Leo Franklin quickly assessed their limited resources. 
The cell, designed to be impregnable, featured a solid metal door and walls, with only a small, barred window offering a glimpse of the facility's interior corridors. The air was stale, the silence broken only by the distant hum of the facility's machinery. We can't stay here, Leo. Kroz is going to use that reactor, consequences be damned, Alex whispered, his eyes scanning the room for anything that could aid in their escape. Leo, ever the pragmatist, was already examining the cell's electronic lock mechanism. The lock is sophisticated, but not infallible. If I can create a short circuit, it might just trigger the emergency release. But we need something to cause a short. We can't exactly ask Kroz for a screwdriver, Alex replied, his tone laced with frustration. Leo's gaze fell on the metal cot bolted to the wall. With a determined nod, he approached it, inspecting the bolts that secured it in place. We may not have a screwdriver, but we do have our ingenuity. Working together, they managed to dislodge one of the cot's legs, a narrow metal rod that Leo believed could be used to tamper with the lock's wiring. The task was risky. One wrong move could easily lead to electrocution, or at the very least, alert Cross's men to their tampering. Ready? Leo asked, holding the makeshift tool in his hand, his expression a mix of determination and apprehension. As I'll ever be. Do it, Alex responded, positioning himself near the door, ready to act the moment it opened. With a deep breath, Leo inserted the metal rod into the lock mechanism's housing, carefully maneuvering it towards the mass of wires. Sparks flew as metal met live wire, and for a heart-stopping moment, nothing happened. Then, with a loud clang, the lock disengaged, and the door swung open. Without hesitation, Alex and Leo burst out of the cell, their senses heightened to the sounds of the facility. The corridors were eerily quiet, most of Cross's men likely stationed at the reactor chamber. This way, Alex murmured, leading Leo through the maze of hallways, moving towards the facility's maintenance sections. He remembered from their initial exploration that these areas were less frequented and could provide a path to the surface. As they navigated the maintenance tunnels, the reality of their situation weighed heavily on them. The facility that once represented a leap forward for humanity now felt like a labyrinthine trap, its secrets a burden too dangerous to wield. Reaching the maintenance lift, Alex punched the button for the surface level, the gears groaning in protest as the lift began its slow ascent. Leo watched the passing levels with bated breath, each one bringing them closer to freedom and the daunting task that lay ahead. We need to warn the Ask Leo. They need to know about Cross's betrayal and the reactor, Alex said, his voice firm, the plan forming in his mind. Leo nodded in agreement. And we'll need evidence. Cross won't go down easily, and without proof, it's our word against his. The lift came to a halt at the surface level, and the doors opened to reveal the cold, alien landscape of Titan. The two men stepped out, their resolve hardening with each step. They had escaped the confines of the facility, but the real challenge was just beginning. In the dim confines of their makeshift holding cell, Commander Alex Mercer and Dr. Leo Franklin were acutely aware that time was running out. Admiral Cross's forces were tightening their grip on the facility, and with each passing moment, the quantum reactor moved closer to activation under unsafe conditions. We can't stay here, Alex said, his voice low but urgent. Cross doesn't understand what he's dealing with. If he activates that reactor without proper safeguards. Leo nodded, his mind racing through potential solutions. I might have an idea, but it's risky. The cell's door mechanism is old, probably overlooked during the facility's last security update. I can create a short circuit, but it'll cause quite a commotion. Right now I'd welcome a commotion, Alex replied with a grim smile. Working quickly and quietly, Leo manipulated the wiring of the cell's electronic lock, his fingers steady despite the pressure. Sparks flew, and with a loud clang, the door swung open. The corridor outside was deserted, the bulk of Cross's forces likely concentrated around the reactor chamber. Alex and Leo moved stealthily, avoiding detection as they made their way toward Atlas Haven's main hub. The facility, once a beacon of scientific exploration, now felt more like a battleground. 
Upon reaching the hub, they found it in disarray, with personnel either locked down in their quarters or under guard by Cross's loyalists. Alex knew they needed to act fast to turn the tide. Climbing atop a central console for visibility, he called out to the gathered crowd, his voice resonating with authority and conviction. Listen up. We're under threat, not just from Cross's ambition, but from the very technology we've uncovered. We need to stand together, now more than ever, to protect what we've built here and ensure the safety of not just Titan, but the entire solar system. Murmurs rippled through the crowd as personnel, scientists, and engineers exchanged uncertain glances. Leo joined in, lending his credibility as a respected scientist. Alex is right. The quantum reactor's potential is immense, but so are its dangers. We've seen the data. We know the risks. We can't let it be misused. Their words struck a chord. Doubt gave way to determination as the hub's occupants began to rally, their resolve strengthening. They were a diverse group, brought together by their work on Titan, but united now by a common cause. All right, what's the plan? A voice called out from the crowd, the question echoing the newfound sense of purpose that filled the room. Alex jumped down from the console, addressing the assembled team with a tactical focus. We need to regain control of the facility, starting with the security and communication systems. If we can cut off Cross's access and reach out to us command, we stand a chance. Groups formed organically, each taking on tasks suited to their expertise. Some set out to sabotage Cross's control over the facility's systems, while others worked to free those still locked in their quarters. Leo focused on assembling a small team to devise a failsafe for the reactor, ensuring it couldn't be activated recklessly. As the resistance grew in numbers and confidence, the balance began to shift. What had started as a desperate plea for unity had ignited a spark of rebellion throughout Atlas Haven. Alex and Leo, once prisoners of circumstance, were now leaders of a movement fighting for the very essence of scientific integrity and human safety. The facility that had been a silent witness to their capture was now alive with the sounds of determined resistance. Every corridor and chamber echoed with the activities of those united under a singular goal, to stop Cross and secure the quantum reactor. In rallying the resistance, Alex and Leo had not just sparked a revolt. They had awakened a collective sense of duty that transcended personal and professional boundaries. The corridors of Atlas Haven had transformed from quiet research spaces into battlegrounds. Commander Alex Mercer and Dr. Leo Franklin, at the helm of a growing resistance, orchestrated a series of strategic moves against Admiral Cross's forces. The stakes were clear, regain control of the facility and prevent the misuse of the quantum reactor at its heart. Alex, leveraging his military training, led teams to secure key areas, cutting off Cross's access to communications and security systems. Team Bravo, secure the comms room. Delta, you're with me. We're going for the main control center, Alex instructed, his voice calm but authoritative. Leo, meanwhile, focused on the scientific front, rallying the facility's brightest minds to devise a way to safely shut down, or if necessary, destroy the reactor. We need a fail-safe, something that ensures the reactor can't be activated under any circumstances, Leo explained to his team, their heads bent over schematics and data pads. The clash came to a head in the heart of Atlas Haven, the main control center where Kroz had set up his command post. Alex and his team, armed and determined, faced off against Kroz and his loyalists in a tense standoff. You don't have to do this, Kroz. Think of the consequences. Alex tried once more to reason with the Admiral, hoping to avoid further conflict. Kroz, with a cold smile, responded, I'm thinking of humanity's future Mercer. A future where we're no longer at the mercy of alien races or distant governments. This reactor is the key, and I will not let it slip through our fingers. The air crackled with tension, both sides knowing what was at stake. The first shot rang out, echoing through the control center, and chaos ensued. The room became a whirlwind of blaster fire and shouted commands. Alex and his team fought with precision, taking cover behind consoles and returning fire. Leo, from a secure location, worked frantically to implement the reactor's fail-safe, 
his fingers flying over the controls. Just a few more seconds, he muttered, sweat beating on his forehead. The tide of the battle turned as Kraus's forces, cut off from reinforcements and realizing the reactor was no longer within their grasp, began to falter. One by one, they were subdued and disarmed, their resolve crumbling in the face of the united front presented by Alex, Leo, and the people of Atlas Haven. In the aftermath, Kraus was taken into custody, his vision of power through the reactor dashed. The control center, scarred by blaster marks and strewn with debris, stood as a testament to the fierce battle fought within its walls. Alex and Leo, surrounded by their fellow resistors, took a moment to catch their breath, the weight of their actions settling in. They had not only saved Atlas Haven, but potentially averted a catastrophe that could have rippled across the solar system. We did it, Alex said, allowing himself a small smile, the relief evident in his voice. Leo nodded, looking around at the faces of those who had stood with them. We did. But this is just the beginning. We need to ensure the reactor is never a threat again. The final stand at Atlas Haven was over, but the journey to secure the future of the quantum reactor, and by extension humanity's place in the stars, was just beginning. In unity they had found strength, and in courage they had found victory. In the aftermath of the confrontation at Atlas Haven, the facility was a stark contrast to the bustling hub of innovation it once was. The control center, now a battleground-turned-monument, stood silent, a reminder of the fine line between discovery and disaster. Commander Alex Mercer and Dr. Leo Franklin, their resolve unwavering, knew the task ahead was monumental but crucial for the future. With Admiral Cross's coup thwarted, the immediate threat to the quantum reactor had been neutralized but the potential for future misuse remained a looming specter. The reactor, a beacon of both promise and peril, required careful stewardship. Alex convened a meeting with the facility's senior staff and key members of the resistance in a secure conference room. The air was thick with anticipation as they gathered around the large, holographic table displaying the reactor's schematics. We've been given a second chance, Alex began, his voice steady. The reactor represents a leap forward for humanity, but its power comes with great responsibility. We need to establish protocols to ensure its security and ethical use. Nods of agreement echoed around the room, the weight of the decision palpable in the silence that followed. Leo, who had been poring over the reactor's data, spoke up. I propose we form a governing council for the reactor, comprised of representatives from the ASC scientific community and civilian oversight bodies. We must guarantee transparency and accountability in all decisions made here. The proposal sparked a lively debate, with various viewpoints on how best to manage the reactor's potential. Suggestions ranged from dismantling it entirely to integrating it into the U.S.'s defense network under strict controls. However, the consensus leaned towards Leo's suggestion of a balanced, multi-stakeholder approach. In the days that followed, Alex and Leo worked tirelessly to draft the charter for the newly formed Quantum Reactor Governance Council QRGC. The document outlined the Council's structure, decision-making processes, and most importantly, its commitment to using the reactor for the betterment of humanity while safeguarding against its risks. The USC High Command, recognizing the significance of the events at Atlas Haven and the potential of the Quantum Reactor, endorsed the establishment of the QRGC. In a ceremony marked by both solemnity and hope, the council was officially inaugurated, with Leo appointed as its inaugural chair. Today marks a new beginning, Leo addressed the assembly, his voice imbued with a sense of purpose. We stand on the threshold of a new era of exploration and discovery, but we must tread this path with caution, wisdom, and a deep commitment to the principles that have guided us here. The QRGC's first actions included implementing stringent security measures around the reactor and launching a series of controlled experiments to better understand its capabilities and limitations. These experiments were conducted with utmost care, ensuring that the mistakes of Project Titanfall were not repeated. Alex, meanwhile, took on the role of Atlas Haven's commander, overseeing the facility's transition to a new phase of operation. 
Under his leadership, Atlas Haven became a symbol of resilience and a testament to the collaborative spirit that had saved it from the brink of disaster. The quantum reactor, once a hidden anomaly, now represented a shared future. Its chambers, once echoing with the solitary hum of untapped potential, now resonated with the collective efforts of those dedicated to securing its promise for generations to come. In securing the future of the quantum reactor, Alex, Leo, and the people of Atlas Haven had not just averted a crisis. They had laid the foundation for a legacy of responsible stewardship over the forces that would shape humanity's destiny among the stars.